Lord, I sure do love you. We pass on all these things in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for saying it. Nice. You can be seated. <clears throat> I'm going to say this this evening. I know it's revival. I understand it's revival. I, uh, service has been real good. And I praise the Lord for that. And, and uh, but I just want to give you what's on my heart this evening. Amen. Uh, I don't want to give you something that's worked up or built up or try to pump or prime. But I just want to give you what's on my heart from the Word of God. But if we'll let God speak to our heart and we'll we'll take heed to the Scriptures. We'll get some help. Uh, the Bible can stir our hearts. And I like good singing. Why well, praise the Lord? Your, your, your choir done a great, great job. Choir, our choir is like for singing. Amen. And I enjoy good singing. But I'm going to tell you something. I, ain't nothing ought to stir God's people like the Word of God. Uh, nothing ought to motivate the people of God like Amen. God's Word. I'm thankful for the Scriptures tonight. I'm thankful for the infallible, unchanging Word of God. I'm thankful for the inherent, inspired Word of God uh, that we can glean from, that we can grow from, that we can get some help from. And uh, so it's our desire tonight to be a help to you, to be an encouragement out of the Bible. Now, as we look at these things about, about the Scriptures tonight, I uh, just want to give you a couple of things real quick. Three things about prayer, and then I'll give you my, my message tonight. Verse number 12, there's three things that you'll learn about prayer as Paul is leading up to pray in this prayer. He's going to teach us some things about prayer. He said, in whom we have Boldness. The first thing I want to share with you tonight quickly by way of introduction is our attitude in prayer. Hey, listen to this evening. If you're saved by God's amazing grace, uh -huh. you realize that you can approach the throne room of God yeah. with boldness. Yeah. I did not say arrogance. I no. said with right. Amen. You know, There's a difference in that. I'll tell you, charismatic movement's got it wrong, my friend. Yeah. Hey, you don't approach God and give God your demands and you tell God what you think. Prayer's not all about that, but yeah. I'm thankful uh, tonight man. that as a child of God, I don't have to be afraid to go to my heavenly right. Father. Yeah. I'm thankful that I don't have to be fearful. And yeah. hey, I think about huh? when the king Come on, I was sitting there on the throne and, and uh, wasn't it uh, <coughs> Queen Esther that was going to go up to the king and she was afraid to approach the king. She uh. said, he can take my life. He's not beckoning for me to come and he don't hold out that scepter. He can take my life. And of course, she found favor with the king. But I'm going to tell you something this evening. I don't have to be afraid of my heavenly Father. Yeah. Locked. That's pretty good advice in the day we live in. Amen. Oh, preacher, we live in the country and we don't have nothing worth taking. You might not have nothing worth taking, but I don't want them in my house regardless. Amen. Amen. They get in my house, it's going to be a bad day for somebody. Amen. 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 I might not ever get woke up and they take everything I got. I just sleep like a baby. That's fine. They need it worse than I did and knock yourself out. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. I've got, I've got keys. I've got keys. Keys are an amazing thing. You know why? Because we lock our doors. That's right. I know people will leave a vehicle, leave keys in it. Um, yeah. Not me. God bless you. Oh, preacher, you gotta trust somebody. Have you lost your mind? I don't leave keys in nothing. Nothing. Why? Hey, because I don't want them to take it. I want them to have zero access if they don't have no business being where they ought to be. Amen. I'm going to tell you something to a lost and dying world that thinks they're just going to run to God as a crutch. I want to tell you something. They have zero access. Amen. They don't have the keys to equip them to get to where God's at. Amen. They are thankful for those of us that's been saved by the grace of God. We have access and because of that access, He's welcomed us. He's invited us. He is beseeching us to come before Him in prayer and present to Him our words. I want you to see what it says. He said we have access by faith. Look at verse 12. And whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. You say, preacher, I love nothing more than to get involved in this prayer. I wish I had a prayer life. I wish I had a direct line with heaven. Hey, I've got some good news for you tonight, preacher. You might have come in this place. Hey, you're, you're on, on the down and out. Uh, maybe you've uh, life just uh, sort of throws you a, uh, a, a, a curveball, if you will. And you say, preacher, it's just bad and it's just, I have no peace. I have no joy. It feels like God's a million miles away. I've never been saved by the grace of God. My friend, if you'll just simply put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, yeah, man. you give the keys. That's right. Lord, yeah. And you have access. Hey, man. Amen. And this, the, the third thing real quickly about prayer is assurance. I want you to see what he says. He uses a word called confidence. Yeah. Yeah. 
Y'all see that confidence? Yeah. Hey, well, I'm thankful that our prayer life, in our prayer life, we can be confident Amen. in all which we're praying to. Amen. And all this is important because it's going to tell you, we're going to talk to you about Paul's prayer. Right. If Paul prayed this prayer because he understood the boldness. That's Paul right. prayed the prayer because he understood that he had access. Paul prayed the prayer because he was confident in the one he was praying to. Wow. That being said, that can motivate us in our prayer life. Yeah. That can help us as we go through life. And I, I'm, I'm going to confess to you that's nice survival meeting. I'm going to basically preach to the church tonight. And I'm, I'm fully aware that the Holy Ghost of God can work in your heart and do what's necessary. If you're here and you're not saved, you need Jesus Christ in order for you to have this access. Yeah. You can have that tonight. Amen. But if you're saved by the sure. grace of God, uh, I want to challenge you about this thing of prayer. Four things that we learned tonight from Paul's prayer. The first off that I want you to see is the resources of prayer. Everybody likes resources. Yeah. yeah. And I like, how many of you like to have more resources? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if that's talking over your head, let me just put it real plain to you. How many of you got an ATM? Hey, man. Got a bank, ATM card. <laughs> Y'all ever went to the bank and the resources are not as plentiful as what you wish they were? <laughs> now, how many of you would really like to have more resources? I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, right. Right. Now, now we get to the same play of field. Right. Yeah, man, <laughs> the resources <laughs> of prayer. When you pray, you're praying to a God that has unlimited resources. Unlimited resources. Hey, that means it doesn't matter how big what I want or what I desire is, God has the resources to grant that the way He sees fit. But now, wait a minute. Before you start swinging, well, we can't swing on chandeliers in here. Before y'all start hanging from these uh, ceiling grids, let me tell you something. Most people have the wrong mentality when it comes to the prayer life. Right. Because they're asking for the external. But Paul here is talking about the internal. Yeah. One author said this. He said, if you get the inside right, the outside will come. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Learn to get the inside in shape. Yeah. The yeah. external things will yeah. shape up. You know, it's amazing when you get your heart right, your desires change. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I ain't here to bust your bubble. You still don't want things. I still want things. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Somebody said it's supposed to be 70. Sis, where are you at? She, where'd she go? She said it's supposed to be 70. Get your motorcycle out. I like it. I like it, sis. I'm for it. Matter of fact, I done got my eye on another one. She fixed that, though. I'm out of resources. I'm out of resources. Yeah. Right. So I best just be thankful for what I got. Amen. 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 Now, I want to show you resources this evening. Look at this. In verse number 16, he said, or verse number 14, he said, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's praying, you see his posture in prayer. Paul's bowing before God. Right. right. Paul has such a burden for these people, these Gentile believers. Yeah. Right. All right, listen to me. Right. Hey, those that the rest of Judaism said they're outcasts. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. But Paul said, Heaven. Paul that had a burden for those Jews right. that said he yeah. was God that he could be a curse for the Jews' sake. The yeah. same Paul got on his knees before the God of heaven and granted a petition yeah, to man. the throne room of God yeah. on their behalf. Yeah. That's yeah. what he prayed for. He said, he said, God, he said, he said, folks, here's what I'm praying, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Amen. Amen. Paul was beckoned yeah. to preach. Paul was, was, was commissioned to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. That means that you can search it, you can mine it, you can dig it, uh, you can try to, to dive down to the depths of it and you will never come to the end of the amount of resources that our God has. Amen. And Paul said, Amen. I'm asking God on your behalf to meet your spiritual needs, that God would meet those needs out of that amount of resources. Let me paint you a picture. Can you imagine going to the ATM and it just keeps spitting out money? My wallet's back here. I mean, you just go to the ATM and you put your account on Not Brother Holder. You put his and you'll get all kind of money. Because Miss Debbie works. So go to that. I agree, sis. That didn't help me. That's You go to that ATM and you put your PIN number in. Your access code. That's what you do. Your access code. You go in there and you push that four-digit code in and you say, well, I'd like to have a little money. And when you get the money, when you get that $20 or $40 out, whatever comes out, it gives you a little statement. Yeah. And on that statement, it'll tell you your current balance after withdrawal. Yeah. 
Yep. It don't take me long to read mine. <laughs> Can you imagine if that they just kept running out a piece of paper and kept printing with zeros on the right end? Amen. I mean numbers and zeros and zeros. And you say, what are you going to do if that happens? I'm going to the holy shop. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because I'll have the resources. Yeah. Hey, listen, what I'm telling you is we talk about prayer like and praying to the God of heaven. Down it's down not down 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 think down that you're praying to a broken man like God. Sometimes I forget about that and I go to God like this. Well, God, mm -hmm. God, I, God, if you could, I sure appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's about a goofy prayer. You're right. He can. Yeah. 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 Now, I might not be his will and I may have to accept that. Right. But with the realm, the fact of the matter is God can. Amen. God can. Yeah. Hey, listen, we go to God sometimes we approach, we approach God. Well, God, you know, if, if, if it won't break you, if it won't break you too much, I, I appreciate that. I'll tell you something, it ain't gonna break him. Yeah. It's not gonna break God. Unlimited resources. Hey, listen, we think about prayer, the resources of prayer. He said, he said, I, I go to God that He would grant you according to the riches of His grace, of, of His glory. You ever think about heaven? You walk, don't you? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. That helps me back by walking a little bit. Yeah. It gets me feeling better. Y'all think about heaven? Street of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. That's not like a poor place to you. Come on, Now listen, I'm not trying to be cheesy here. I'm just talking about the reality of, of the heaven that we're talking right. about. Yeah. Heaven is the dwelling place of God. Right. You read about the throne, you go look at Revelation, and you read about the throne room, and you read about what the throne looks like and the, and the, and the, and the crystal sea, and all those things are in heaven. And we worry about... The resources of God. That's good. We wonder how are we going to pay our power bill? I got, we, we just got, we got that. Two, three girls down to Pensacola Christian College and looked at the college and, and uh, my wife's down there signing papers. Uh -oh. Paying money. That's bad, Brother Wilkes. Oh, tell me I done paid money. I, yeah. got two I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm thinking under, under heaven. I ain't never going to get that hard with that. <laughs> no, brother. No. no. I'm preaching. I'm living the resources. I'm living the resources. He done got me all tore up. <laughs> I begin to weigh in my mind, how are we going to pay for this? How, how are we going to pay? And I, I wanted to go and get a good education, and it really is for the money. It's a good education for the money. But it's still a lot of money. She don't have a job. A lot of money and no job equals guess who's paying for it? Uh-huh. Mama. If mama don't have a job, where are we going to get the resources? Yeah, yeah. So now so now I go get spiritual. I pray, oh, oh dear God. Dear Lord, it's me again, Lord. Dear dear Lord, if, if God if, if you can, God if you will. Uh, now all those things are outward things. But wait a minute, he's talking about the intern. Right. Amen. He's talking about the intern. When we get on in the scriptures, you're going to see that, that Paul is praying for their betterment. From the inside out. Amen. We focus so much of our prayer life on the external. Yes, sir, preacher. That we never even really get down to the matter. Now, you listen to what I'm saying. I'm telling you, true, 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 true. preachers are just as bad. Yes, sir. God, keep the lights on. God, we need carpet. God, we need pews. God, we need song books. God, we need a sound system. God, we need a van. God, we need this. God, we need a roof. God, we need power. God, we need this, that, and the other. And we never deal with the internal. Never deal with the internal. Paul's talking about the internal. Yeah. He said, I'm asking God, hey, with unlimited resources, that God would provide the internal things. By the way, the external will come. Amen. All right, so we're talking about the resources, the resources of prayer. All right, let's get down to Paul's request of prayer. Paul's request of prayer. What did Paul ask for? Well, I, there, there's a book that I read when I was in Bible college <laughs> by John R. Rice, Prayer, Ask You to Receive It. One of the best books on prayer you've never read. I'm not an avid reader. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you authors. My pastor can do that. I, I just, I'm not an avid reader that way. And I'm going to tell you something. That's a good book. Prayer, asking and receiving. See, preachers, is it really that simple? It really is. 
It really is. Read it. It's a little book about that thick. It ain't no 3,000 page book. Right. I'd quit after being told that. It's a little book. You can read it. Good. Prayer, asking, and receiving. I want you to see what Paul's petition was. What was he asking him for? He said in verse number 16 that he would, what's that say? Your King James Bible. Grant you. And you don't have to have a you don't have to have a degree to understand the Greek language to understand what grant means. It means that God would give it to you. Amen. God would give it to you. He said, I, there's something that I'm asking God, not for myself. He said, I'm asking God to give it to you because you're God's chosen people. You're God's church. You've been saved by the grace of God. And there are some things that you need in your life that I'm asking God that God would go to the ATM of heaven and reach in out of His abundant riches of glory and provide for you Amen. because you need it. Amen. That's exactly what Paul said. He said, there's some internal things that you need. You say, what are they? First of all, he said, I'm asking God to equip you. To equip you. Look at the latter part of verse 16. He said that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened. Now that, that little according to the riches of His glory, that's a clause, isn't it? In the English language, isn't that a clause? It's a, it's a breaking thought. It's almost a phrase. Is it a clause, Cassie? It's not a clause. It's what? It's a phrase. Okay. Such a nerd. <laughs> it's like it's got a big set of parentheses around it. Yeah. All the rest of us rednecks look this way. Hey, off, don't seem so bad after all. <laughs> she wrote more illustrations fixing my English. But I love her just with asking her. I'm preaching. Now. <laughs> It's a break in the thoughts what I was trying to get you to see. He said that He would grant you, grant you what? To be strengthened. How's He going to give us strength? Out of the riches of glory. Right. That's what it means. That He would grant you to be strengthened with might by His Spirit. Where's that at? In the inner man. He said that He would strengthen you in the inner man. Hey, that your inner man, that the Spirit of God would live through you and you'll be strengthened in this inner man to cause you to live your life that you need to live. Yes, sir. You say, what is that? That's equipping us. That's equipping us. If you go on in to the Bible and talk about the whole armor of God, that's the equipment we put on. That's the equipment we put on. He said, I want Him to strengthen the inner man. I'm going to tell you something. All the externals, external things come and go, but who, who you are on the inside will determine what kind of stand you make. Amen. That's right. Who you are, what you believe on the inside will determine what you do yes, on the outside. Amen. He said, I'm asking sure. God to equip you and equip the inner man through the Spirit of God. All right, second of all, to, to equip you, he said, but to establish you. Well, I mean, a lot of Christians that have no idea and they really have no foundation. Wow. We was talking about supper. <clears throat> we was talking about families and, and folk that used to be where used to be at our place, used to be here. That they're, they're no, no longer with us. They're just no longer anywhere. Right. Right. They just got out, just got out of the house of God and quit on God. I'll tell you something, you might get mad at a preacher, but God ain't ever done you wrong. Amen. That's good. Amen. You, know what I'm you might get mad at him. Yeah. And hope after Saturday night, you probably gonna get mad at me. But God in heaven has never done you wrong. Amen. If you quit on because of a preacher, you're quitting on God that's never done you wrong. That's good. Tell you what you're revealing. You're, you're revealing that you have no foundation. Amen. You're yes. revealing that you've never been fundamentally grounded anywhere. Amen. You're revealing. He said, I tell you what I'm asking God for is that I, so I'm asking God to equip you. He said, but I'm asking God to establish you. Look at the next thing he says. He said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. There, boy, there's fellowship. I didn't even get that. Mm -hmm. That ye being rooted and grounded. Look at this. In love. Amen, Amen preacher. Love's an amazing thing. Yes, sir. Amen. People do some goofy stuff for love. That's right. Amen. Amen. And they will. Amen. They will. People do some goofy stuff for love. Fellas will spend all the money they've ever saved because they love somebody. <laughs> Goofy stuff for love. I mean, that we'll just we'll lose our mind. <laughs> love will cause you to do some strange things. You do some things for your children because you love them that you never imagined. Amen. I mean, you just you'll, you'll do without. You'll go hungry. We're, we're pretty flesh oriented. We, I like me. Amen. Now don't be don't be don't sit there and say, "Well, that preacher's you, you like you." Go ahead, preacher. We're mind that way, but we'll do things. Because of love. 
Yeah. Amen. There's Amen. things that I'll do for my wife because I love her Amen. that I wouldn't do for anybody else. Amen. 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 I've known things that grandparents would do for their grandbabies that they would definitely not do for anybody else. Right. Amen. I'm not listening to this. Now, y'all, this, this is not my dad. I'm going to give a disclaimer. This is not my dad. I have known some pawpaws that will let their granddaughters paint their toenails. <laughs> I want to go on record. I might love that grandbaby, but they ain't paint my toenails. <laughs> <laughs> you do say, I said I said that was not my dad. I, I, that's a disclaimer. I figured I better say that to get him out of trouble. Yeah. Love will make you do some things that you can never fathom. But wait a minute, love is also a foundation. Love will stick through some things. Love will endure some things. Because you have a love that you would never endure for anybody else. Yeah. I've seen some little old bitty women. With their finger in the face of a guy who's about six foot six, about 265 pounds, solid as a rock, and just got him bent over and chewing him out, I mean, giving him what for? That if a grown man looked him in the eyeballs and talked to him about what well, he'd stomp him. And when that little old bit of nothing with blonde hair and blue eyes is sitting there chewing him out like this. <laughs> <laughs> and goes to the house that way. Yeah. He's yeah. not the lover. Right. Or afraid of going to jail one two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One two. Hey, what is it? What is it that when we get our feelings hurt, or when life happens to you and I right. as Christians who profess to know the love of right. Jesus Christ, why is it that the first person we hurt is the person that loves us the most? Why is it that when we get things just go a little bit uh, not our way and we feel like, well, that, well, I didn't get what I wanted and I didn't get this, and so I'm just going to quit and go my way. Paul said, I'm praying that you'll be rooted yeah. and grounded, Amen. not in some empty vain promises, but rooted and grounded in love. Amen. Amen. i tell you what he said. He said, I want you to fall in love with Jesus like you don't love anyone else. Amen. He said, my prayer for you to God is that God would reach into the ATM of glory and fill you up with the love of God and fill you up with love for God and love for your Savior because He already loved us so much He went to Calvary. He said, I pray that God would equip you and establish you in this love. Well, if we just fall in love with Him like we ought to do everything else, it'll be all right. He said, I pray that He equip you. I pray that He establish you in love. He said, I pray that he'll educate you. You know, it'd do, some, it'd do us some good as Christians if we get a little educated. Yeah. Can I tell you there's more to being saved than just going to heaven? Yeah. That's right. Most people quit when they, when they, when they get a church of the salvation. They think, well, well this, this thing's over. This thing's just starting. Amen. Well, they don't, they don't know anything about the Word of God. They don't know anything about the Savior in which they uh, saved them. They, don't, they never learned to serve. They never learned. They never have any peace. They never have any joy. They're not grounded in the Word of God. He said, I want you to be educated. He said, there's some things I want you to know. There's just two things. Look what he says. He said, why do I want you to be rooted and grounded in love? Because unless you're rooted and grounded, you'll never be able to go forward. Amen. Every building starts with a foundation. Right? All right. Right, right. right. Amen. Now, every building starts with the foundation. The foundation right. fall. If the foundation crumbles, yeah, there's nothing to build on. Right. right. And so our foundation first is we're established in the love of God. Now, by the way, that being said, sometimes love's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. Sometimes love can be harsh. Sometimes in love, you can hear some things that you don't necessarily like, but because you love, you'll still you'll stick around. Amen. Amen. So we get in the Word of God, some of that stuff hurts. Yes, sir. Yeah, some right. of that stuff molds us and shapes us. Yes, sir. We get the, on the potter's wheel, he begins to knock off anything that don't look godly, anything that don't look pleasing unto the Lord. Hey, if we're not rooted and grounded and established in love, hey, we'll jump off the wheel and decide we're going to head back. That's good, preacher. He said, I want you to be established. He said, because I want you to do some things. He said, first of all, that you may be able to comprehend. Now, I like this. I read this verse, read this verse, but I'm going to read it again for this message. Look what he says. That you may be able to comprehend with all saints. Y'all see that? Yeah. Your Bible. Mm -hmm. With all saints. 
We get this idea that the Jews are God's chosen people, and then, then there's this crowd over here. They've been saved for a long, long time. He said, but let me tell you what my prayer is for you. He said, I want you to be as far along in the things of God as they are on the same things Amen. of God. I want you to have the same opportunity. I want you to have the same understanding yes. of the Word of God. Amen. I want you to be able for yourself to dig into God's precious Word Amen. and to learn to mind some things out for you Amen. based on the Spirit of God leading Amen. you through the Scriptures Amen. of the Word Amen. of God. Amen. He said, I want God to impart that into you Amen. and educate you in his Amen. will through his word. Amen. Amen. He said, with all saints. Hey, that means if you're saved by the grace of God, you and I are, are without excuse. That's right. That's right. Be educated in the things of God. Amen. Well, I, I just don't know as much as the preacher knows. Well, you might not, but you ought to study. Amen. 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 Get in the word of God. Read it for yourself. Amen. Read it. Boy, y'all got quiet on that. You're right, preacher. Amen. Amen. Read it for yourself. Get in there and dig, study, and ask God to give you some things that you might be able to comprehend some things. That's a word that just means some spiritual discernment. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, we live in a day that Christians have no spiritual discernment. Yeah. Spiritual discernment. Those things that we just ought to know that. Amen. Spiritual discernment. Yeah. Right. You parents. You ever looked at your kids and scratched your head and said, boy, that's dumb? <laughs> Amen. Hey. That boy. Amen. Y'all ever done that? Oh, yeah. Amen. Hey, that girl. Not yet. <laughs> I, I mean, just, just watch her. I said not yet. I mean, really, they, they have no discernment. <laughs> I'm not going off with your children. <laughs> All of us go through that. Right. Let me go ahead and bust your bubble. Your parents looked at you and said the same thing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> that was a break. <laughs> I know they did. Yeah, I, and you wonder, why, why don't they have any sir? But I'm going to tell you, sometimes Christians are puzzled you. You, you listen to people stand up and say, oh, how I love Jesus in the choir. Just like I said, when they leave. Yeah. And wonder why they can't reach their family. Come to the weekend and cry. Preacher, my kids are rebellious. Preacher, my family don't want to hear. Can't get them to come to church. You have no discernment, sir. Man, you have no discernment. That's right. Of God. He said God expects and desires more from His people. He said, I pray that God give you some sermon. May be able to comprehend with all the saints house more than that. Look what he says. What is the breadth and length and depth and height? Now, how many of you would say by reading that that's, that God wants us to get off the surface things and get us into the deep things of God? Yeah. Amen. He said God wants us to comprehend. That means to understand. Yeah. God wants us to understand. He said, I'm praying that God would give us some discernment so that we can understand and educate Him. And then He says, and to know the love of Christ. So you have two words here. You have the word to comprehend and you have the word to know. Right. The word know means to ascertain by seeing. Do you know how you know something? Because you've seen it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's been proven. Yeah. Now I want to show you in this verse what Paul was praying that God will give us so that we can know. He said, I pray to God that you might be able to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Now I'm from West Virginia. That's hard to figure out. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to know something that's beyond knowing. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's what your Bible says. Right. Yeah. He said, I'm praying to God that God would allow you to know some things that the normal fella can't know. Amen. That the normal mind cannot comprehend. He said, but I want God to teach him. He said, preacher, that's impossible. No, no. Because he's going to go to the ATM of glory and reach into the ATM of glory and impart that to you as an answer to prayer. And it's amazing how the light bulb can come on. I want to tell you something. How, how God's people can understand the peace of God when we go through the trip, when we go through the storms of life. How God's people can know the uh, the love of God and how God's people can know the will of God and the plan of God. And this world's out here running around like a bunch of chickens with their head cut off, can't figure out which way is up. Hey, but God's people can roll steady through life. God's people can have a direction. They can set the course for glory. They can navigate through this world. Why? Because God has imparted some things to them and educated them, and they can have the sermon and know. Oh, what the average man can't know. Yeah. 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 I tell you, you said, that's what I'm praying for. Yeah. That's things with on the inside. Hey, that ain't praying for a new car, new house, new oh, home. Man, what yeah. That's praying for things on the inside. He said, God, make him whole from the inside. Make him what he ought to be. So pray for God to equip you. Pray for God to establish you. Pray that God will educate you. And then I pray that God will undo you. Pray that God will give you something. Look what he says. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled 
with all the fullness of God. Amen. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's a pretty good prayer. I mean, filled up, can't hold no more. I'm going to be honest with you, preacher. When we left the restaurant, I wasn't just full as I've been. I mean, I wasn't. As my, as, I mean, I could have been. He said, right there's the menu. You order everything you want. And I said, well, I, you know, first of all, you know, I can't hold that much. Second of all, i got to preach. Third of all, I don't have that many points. But I have, but I have lived before places and been full. Full to where I don't want no more. Y'all ever been that way? And y'all have this never blood. I ain't preaching for blood. Amen. I've been that way. I mean, just full. Amen. What the Billy Kelly said he was full. She said, Preacher, I, have, I got dessert. He said, That's what I say my neck for. I'm full up to my neck. That's what I say my neck for. I've been filled, but most of the time, we as God's people don't don't leave without being filled. We don't leave because it's God's fault. That's right. good. Yeah. We leave because it's our fault. It's our fault. Yeah. Amen. It's preacher. right there. Yes, sir. All we've got to do is ask for it. All we've got to do is go get it. There's unlimited riches and glory that we can have and be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. And yet we'll choose to walk away not filled. Praise God. Paul said, My prayer for you as Christians. That you be filled with all the fullness of God. All right, so we see the resources of prayer, the request of prayer. Third of all, like quickly, look at the record of prayer. The record. You see the record, yeah. We saw the resources, first of all. The resources in the record all, all most go hand in hand. I want you to look at, at, the, at the next verse, verse number 20. This is the verse that God put on my heart that really served me for the whole message. He said, Now unto him that is able to do. Yeah. Now begin to think about that. Unto him that's able to do. How do I know that God's able? How do I know? Hey, we tell it to people all the time. Hey, God's able. God's able. You got to trust God. God's able. How do they know that? It's good. How do we know that? I tell you how I know it because God's proven Himself time and time again. All I have to do is go back and search the record that God is able. Amen. Hey, was God able? Hey, to help Abraham? Yeah. Was God able to lead Noah? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, was God able to deliver Lot? Yes. Yeah. Was God able? Sure He's able. But God is now unto Him that is able. What we're looking at in verse 20 and 21, you see the closing of His prayer. He's closing His prayer. Most of the time we close our prayer and it's so repetitious we can't even tell you what we said. That's good. But in the closing of Paul's prayer, it had meaning as well. Now when he's praying, you got to go back. He said, I was called to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. He said, verse number 8, he said, that's what I was called to do. He said, in verse number 14, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, hey, that he would grant you according to his riches and glory. He said, I'm asking God for something. And he goes on and gives us the list. How he wants God to equip us, establish us, and so on and so forth. And then in his closing prayer, he said, now, unto him that is able to do. Amen. He didn't ask God to do anything in the lives of these Christians or in us as the local church today that God's not able to do. And the reason we know that That's God's good. able is to make His record. Yeah. Yeah. That is able to do exceeding yeah. abundantly yeah. above all yeah. that we ask for things. Hey, you reckon that, that, that Paul put enough adjectives in there for us? Yeah. Exceedingly, abundantly, right. above. Hey, Paul wanted to skip the pictures. God's able to far exceed yeah. I think about this. I'll give you this. Give you one more, and I'll let you get the house. 
Moses said, God, I can't get them. God, I can't talk. Yeah. Good God, God, I said it. God, I can't. God, I, I can't get up. I, I stutter. I get real nervous. Be, be, be. Yeah. Try. He said, well, I'll tell you what. You take care. Yeah. You don't hear old Aaron talking too much. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's you read your Bible, Aaron don't say no whole lot. Yeah. That's right. Except when he said, well, God, if Moses, I just throw the gold in there and I'll jump this calf. Yeah. 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 I don't believe I want him preaching my meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, how many times have you seen Moses talking to people, leading God's people, being the mouthpiece, going up on the mountain, coming back down? That's to good. Speak Amen. On behalf of God. Hey, God does something in Moses' is like, hey, that Moses never talked like Amen. Hey, the same God that can do it for Moses is the same God that can do it for you and I. It's good. Boy, look, he said the record. Let me show you one other thing. I'm done. The rejoicing <coughs> of prayer. The rejoicing of prayer. Everybody likes to rejoice in the house of God. Yeah. I, man, I hope you do. Yeah, man. I, I'll be honest. I, I, I warned our folks, Brother Holder. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Holder was at our church. Didn't he open the side door? Yes. yes. No preaching to the outside. Yes. Man, they, they cats and dogs get saved. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he likes to rejoice. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, if we want to have real rejoicing in God's house, it'll start with the inside. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Not the outside. Yeah. Anybody, anybody, I, listen, I ain't going to lie. I, I love you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. I'm not accusing him of this. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Anybody who hoot and holler that way. You're right. Anybody. Charismatic movement does it all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Turn on TV and man, they're barking and laughing and rolling in the floor and this, that, and the other. They don't even know Jesus Christ says that. Right. Oh. Hey, I'm being honest. Turn on TV and watch that mess. I'm yeah. watching long. Yeah. But go on there and see like I'm telling the truth. You think, man, they're having a time in the Lord. And God ain't within 10,000 miles of those places. They're perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're preaching a false doctrine. Yeah. Hey, they're giving a, a social gospel. Have nothing to do with the power of the Spirit. Of yeah. yeah. If you want to have real rejoicing in your church, I mean real rejoicing. Let me tell you where it starts. Look what he says. He said, unto him. Unto who? Unto the one that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask to think. In the lives of his children. He said, when God equips you with these things that I'm praying and asking God to reach into the portals of glory and to fill his children with. He said, when God does this in the lives of his children, it's going to bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Unto Him be glory in the church. I just want to glorify God. Wonderful. Once you get on your knees before God, ask God to educate you. Amen. Ask God to equip you. Ask God to do you. Ask God to give you more. And since you might be filled to the fullest, you've got all the Holy Ghost you're ever going to give. Yeah. You've been indwelt and do with the Spirit of God. And ask God to fill you. There's a difference between filling and dwelling. Yeah. Ask God to fill you. You might have to do some emptying so you can get full. That's, yeah, good. that's good. Amen. If we'll do that, if we'll do that, God will get full in our churches. 